My name's Ira Rogers, and in my neighborhood, I will illustrate to you the cure for metastatic totalitarianism in the 21st century. Little by little, the Nazis were reaching what they called the final solution. Those who were fit for work were sent into the camp. Others were sent immediately to the extermination chambers. The way we do contact tracing won't be as uh, invasive and so it won't be quite as perfect. We had two SS doctors on duty at Auschwitz to examine incoming transports of prisoners. You've said some more than seven billion doses. That's what we'll need. Well, if, if what you're trying to do putting up shower curtains between tables to limit contact between patrons. I think it's quite on the cards that we may have drugs which will profoundly change uh, our mental states uh, without doing us any harm. I mean, this is the, the pharmacological revolution which has taken place, that we have now powerful mind-changing drugs which, physiologically speaking, are almost costless. I mean, they are not like opium or like coca. Consequences of lockdown are not easily repaired. In Jew Jewish thought, this is called pikuach nefesh. Godol hamartio yosem in hargo. To kill a person spiritually is worse than to kill him physically. And our children are being killed spiritually by these restrictions, by these Most lockdowns. Most important of all, our beloved rabbi. Rabbi, may I ask you a question? Certainly, Labish. Is there a proper blessing for the Tsar? A blessing for the Tsar, of course. May God bless and keep the Tsar far away from us. <laughs> that cowardly sneak attack on one of the world's wealthiest men. The target was Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates arriving for a meeting with community leaders. Watch what happens when a team of hitmen meet him first with a pie in the face. Gates was momentarily and understandably shaken, but he was not injured. The hit squad piled on with two more pies before one of them was wrestled to the ground and arrested the others for at least the moment. No word on the motive for this attack. Bill, though, the, the data showed that everybody with a high dose had a, a side effect. Yeah, but some of that is, is not dramatic where, you know, it's just, you know, super painful. But yes, there, we need to make sure there's not severe side effects. There's two kinds of flus. There's flus that spread between humans very effectively. And there's flus that kill lots of people. And those two properties have only been combined uh, into a, a widespread flu once in history. Well, that is Spanish flu. We have no idea where it came from. It's called the Spanish flu because the Spanish press was the freest. They were the first to talk openly about it. Though today's disease is often compared to the flu due to its flu-like symptoms, we also agree this virus, no matter its name, shape, or symptoms, is about as real as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was very real. The common cold is very real, too. Fortunately, though, the flu numbers this year have absolutely plummeted worldwide. And that's good news, right? <laughs> uh, uh, do, do you never party? Uh, you know, I'm, I sit and talk to people, but mostly I'm <laughs> I talk about malaria and tuberculosis. And uh, for people who like that, I am a, a fun guy. <laughs> Disruptions caused by war and civil unrest led to an increased prevalence of communicable diseases during World War II, including tuberculosis. The Third Reich diverted resources required for war that in peacetime might have been allocated to the public health systems and used for diagnosis and treatment. The picture of tuberculosis in wartime was further complicated because the disease was deeply enmeshed metaphorically and li literally in the Nazi ideology of racial purity. Adolf Hitler equated the Jews with Basili and referred to them as the racial tuberculosis of the nations. Tuberculosis thus served as a metaphor for the Jewish problem that suggested aggressive means as a solution. What, what innovation are you talking about? What's the number one priority? What do we have to innovate first? Well, in the near term, it's the scaling up of testing and prioritizing who gets testing and getting the quick results. In the midterm, it's these treatments uh, that can cut the death rate down uh, potentially uh, dramatically. 
And then the final solution, uh, which is a year to two years off, is the vaccine. So we've got to mm -hmm. go full speed ahead on all three fronts. Tuberculosis thus served as a metaphor for the Jewish problem that suggested aggressive means as a solution. In Mein Kampf, Hitler expounded on this metaphor. It is no accident that man mastered the plague more easily than tuberculosis. The the one comes in terrible waves of death that shake humanity to the foundations, the other slowly and stealthily. I talk about malaria and tuberculosis and uh... Surely this heroic philanthropist wouldn't dog whistle final solution on a late night TV show. And then the final solution, uh, which is a year to two years off is the vaccine. Chapter four of uh, tuberculosis and war, ill-conceived attempts to find a tuberculosis vaccine or effective tuberculosis medications. Uh, just to head off the conspiracy theorists, maybe we shouldn't call the vaccine the final solution. Maybe just the Good best point. solution. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, uh, the return to normal solution. Exactly. Are you aware that there are people out there who have these conspiracy theories that this was all created by you in order to inoculate everyone in the world and put a chip into their blood so you can track them? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, very strange. Yes. You know, th that the organization that's about saving lives and warning, uh, you know, gets attacked as though... Uh, we were somehow connected to it. Well, if you don't save our lives, you can't control our brains. <laughs> History can be quite compelling. Further on out, the work we're doing now to find a therapeutic, a drug to reduce the disease, to cut the deaths down, you know, we're hopeful uh, that even in six months, some of those will have been approved. Uh, but the ultimate solution- Wait, what did he say? Uh, but the ultimate solution- Hmm. Where have I heard that before? But don't worry about all this talk. A safe and effective vaccine is coming soon. We'll be back to normal in no time. The only thing that really lets us go back completely to normal and feel good about sitting in a stadium with lots of other people is to create a vaccine and not just take care of our country, but take that vaccine out to the global population and uh, so that we have vast immunity and this thing no matter what isn't going to spread in large numbers oh whoops i didn't mean to touch my face melinda gates lays out her biggest concern for the next phase of the covid 19 pandemic in, in these easy time.com questions for melinda gates are nothing like that lady from cbs who is basically grilling uh bill gates uh, as you saw earlier who needs it after healthcare workers uh, and this is, this is Melinda Gates answering right here. In the U.S., that would be black people next, quite honestly, from many other people of color. In 1935, the law for the protection of genetic health of the German people was passed that prevented individuals from marrying if they suffered a variety of diseases deemed to be genetic, including tuberculosis, despite evidence to the contrary. These laws were directed at what Hitler termed the Aryan population as a means of improving the overall health of the nation based on the principles of eugenics. Linking biology and heredity, the the goal rendered those identified as unfit from passing on their defects via marriage and reproduction, thus regulating the Aryan gene pool and engineering what Hitler conceived as the ideal Nordic race. You know, here's the article right here by The Atlantic. Super spreading of SARS-CoV-2. It might be that some people are super emitters of the virus in that they spread it a lot more than other people. But looking back to history, where have we heard this kind of thing before? The aggressive means led to the mass incarceration of Jews, Roma, and the Gypsies, and other undesirables in ghettos and camps where crowded conditions, malnutrition, and lack of hygiene and medical care promoted the pr progression and transmission of tuberculosis and other infectious diseases. Death resulted from lack of treatment, starvation, and or murder. Nazi ideology incorporated the eugenics movement with its focus on racial hygiene as central to public health and thus promoted tuberculosis as a marker of genetic inferiority, legitimizing stigmatization, sterilization, and even euthanasia of people afflicted by the disease. Nazi doctors and nurses also endorsed cruel medical experiments on human subjects including adults and children. 
some of the experiments targeted tuberculosis using study subjects that the Nazis deemed undesirable, such as the Jews and Roma, or others considered genetically inferior as a result of physical or mental disabilities. Hindsight is 2020. 